Hey there everybody, thanks so much for joining me here today. My name is Jeremy, I'm a motion graphics designer, animator, and 3D hobbyist. This show is an unrehearsed screen recording of my workflow and a peek into my journey to develop a deeper design skill set. Here it's not so much practice makes perfect, but more practice makes progress. This is The Drill. All right, so this week on the drill, as advertised, what I'm gonna be doing is a cloth simulation with soft body dynamics right in Cinema 4D without any third party plugins to help me out with that. So uh, right off the bat, in Photoshop I designed a 4096 by 4096 square uh, pattern, just the drill 26, because that's what episode we're on. Um, and that's gonna allow me to texture my cloth in a really interesting and customized way. So first thing I'm doing right here, I'm following this uh, tutorial from EJ Hasenfratz over at iDesign.com. Um, I'm gonna send you over there right now. If you look up in the corner, there is a link to that tutorial. Really helpful, easy to digest tutorial that really helped me to complete this episode this week and better understand how you could use soft body dynamics to get a very realistic looking cloth. So the first thing I'm doing here is I'm using some spheres. I've set up my dynamics with the cloth um, and the spheres so that I'm dropping my plane onto the spheres to start to wrinkle it up. Uh, once it was dropped on there, I set the initial state and then dropped it again onto a new plane so that it's just like a wrinkly cloth dropping on the floor so it's even more crumpled. Then here, because I'm using the dynamic system instead of the cloth system, I could use um, some of the dynamics objects to help me animate that further. So I'm using a fan to push this cloth off the edge of it and already I'm back into texturing. This was actually pretty easy and straightforward, just following EJ's tutorial. It gives you the idea and principles behind it so you can kind of explore different ideas for yourself. So what I'm doing right here is I'm using a amazing material pack from Travis Davids, who I'm sure if you're watching this, you're familiar with Travis Davids, but he is linked down below as well. Here is a link to the, tr to the uh, fabric pack. What this is is an inexpensive, a pack of maps for different types of fabrics. So I'm using this ripped fabric material and then I'm using, I'm piping in my uh, custom designed uh, drill banner to get this like almost like screen printed like glossy kind of material on top of that. I'm using, um, I, you saw me open Photoshop a second time. What I was doing in Photoshop there was uh, I set up an opacity map so that the the glossy material is only appearing there. And then the whole thing has an opacity uh, channel on it to give it this like distressed, uh, ripped feel. Um, but other than that, it's really just straightforward. It's like the colors, uh, there's a normal map. Um, I think there's a roughness and a gloss map in there, but it's really easy. You just pu pump it in and pipe it in into your Octane. Uh, I mean, you can use it for any sort of plugin, uh, third-party renderer, but I use it for Octane, obviously. It gives you this really awesome uh, material. So uh, as far as After Effects, really straightforward, standard kind of drill stuff, just kind of uh, doing a little mastering on the image there. Uh, broke the RGB um, at the end there to just kind of separate out uh, and give it a little bit more realistic camera look. And here is the final render. I'm really excited about this. If you look at, uh, you could see this really nice texture on this material. Uh, Travis did a great job uh, making these. Um, the, then there's the rips and tatters. That's this specific texture that I'm using. Um, but uh, really, really happy with how this came out. Um, animating up the fan, so you can see that's where it just kind of, at first it's like rough, rustling a little bit, and then it just kind of, just kind of gets blown away and kind of dragged back. Uh, I was playing around with the idea of playing it in reverse and having it revealed that way. I think that'd be a really cool way to reveal a logo maybe if you had it perfectly centered, because obviously you can't really read what it is saying on the screen. The drill that one of the, you know, the first L is cut off. Uh, but whatever. There you go. That is this week's episode. Thanks so much for watching. You know how YouTube works. Like, share, subscribe, comment down below, ring the bell if that's your thing. You could reach me on Instagram at Jeremy underscore Walker. That's at J-R-M-Y underscore W-L-K-R. You could also shoot me an email or reach out to me right on my website and you can see all sorts of stuff on the website. 
I hope to see you guys next week where I'll be modeling a clock and playing with some specular materials and octane to make it foggy and abandoned. That is actually a really cool reference that I found on Instagram that I'll be using as kind of a guide. And of course, I will be showing you where I got that so you guys can go check out their page as well. So like I said, like, share, subscribe, comment down below, ring the bell, all that good stuff. I can't wait to see you all next week on The Drill. Thank you.